So here we are at the Kings Lynn Raceway, of course, uh, the world taking place here. Some 66 cars, saloon stock cars at its best. And uh, boy, we've got a massive crowd that's going to make their way here at uh, Kings Lynn to the Norfolk Arena. In front of me, I've got uh, Craig Barnett. Craig uh, had a massive uh, crash at uh, Scotland not so long ago, back in May. Uh, just returned, but, but been in blistering form, haven't you? Yeah, I've been going all right since been back. Had a couple of wins and that, a few seconds, but this is the one we want tonight. Of course, I mean, you've never had the gold roof. It, I mean, you've been so close. Scotland last year, I think you were third, were you? The third last year. I've been twice up here last two times, so hopefully third time lucky for her. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that uh, you must have a, a, a pretty massive boost of confidence in your head being, I think, six times track champion out of seven years? Seven out of eight. Seven out of eight, is it? Yeah, but hopefully, well, I don't really mean a lot. Well help but as anyone's race is one race and that's it and of course you've got to ride your luck as, as anybody you've got uh, young luke grief at the front inside you're you're on the outside i mean how do you think it's going to go in that first bend well track conditions are wetter and just hopefully we can get away but like i said there's some good men in the field uh, to see how it goes really well, we've certainly got the uh, the gold paint ready. Should you win the win the uh, world, and we wish you all the best. But should you actually uh, get knocked out of the world, who would you put your money on to win? Well, like I said before, there's um, a lot of good drivers. Like it's Griefy and Samson at the front. A little further back, you got oldest my brother, Carl Warfield. All good drivers. Everyone's got a good chance. Like I say, but we're, there's only one race. We'll see how it goes. Well, I wish you all the best and hopefully we'll be, next time we'll be interviewing you, you will be the world champion. Thank you. So Luke Grief uh, taking the top rankings for the world championship uh, uh, inside front. How does that make you feel, Luke? Um, I suppose a little bit nervous, but we'll just see what happens after the first lap. And of course, sitting there on the front inside and looking in your rear mirror to see some top names be behind you, surely that gets your uh, heart pumping. Yeah, I mean, anyone on the grid can win it, but uh, obviously the, the ones that are further up the grid are more likely, can, do you know what I mean, how they're in the world rankings and that, but just see how it goes, try and pull away from them. And let's look back to the world last year at Caldenbeath. I mean, it was a fantastic race. Shane Brown took it. Is there? A, do, do you recount that moment when there's something you could have done that you didn't to, to win? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to say after the race, when you're in the race, all you're thinking about is the other car, you're not really thinking about how many laps are left or anything like that. I mean, ideally I should have knocked him out of the way, knocked him up the wall and won it, but he could have done the same to me earlier on when he caught me up, but he didn't, he raced fair. Um, I think if it weren't for Kenny Purdy, I think I might have won it, but we can all say what we should have done and what we would just try and improve and try and win it the next year. Of course, and looking at 2008, you won the British, you won the UK, you also won the ORCI Championship, plus of course uh, a, a number of track championships. This year, 2009, won the English Championship and the World Masters. I mean, they are some titles, but surely gold is the one. Oh yeah, gold is the one. Um, though I'm really proud of, you know, I mean, proud of myself for winning them ones, uh, but I mean, the, the world is the, the biggest one, definitely. And with the greatest of respect, you, with all those titles that I've just said, things haven't gone as well as they have for you of late, have they? No, I mean, it's obviously when you're starting at the back with, um, you know what I mean, when you get a roof grade championship, you're starting off the back, it is a lot, lot harder to get through through the grid. Um, but I mean, as long as you're getting no issue as much, but you're still scoring a lot of points and that, which is um, always good and always seems quick, so that's, that's the main thing. A young gun that possibly could win the World Championship, Luke Grief 219. Best of luck. Cheers, thank you very much. So uh, another driver that is uh, very, very fast on the shell is uh, Lee Sampson, 428. Uh, used to do mini stocks, uh, I believe won the national here. Uh, when was that? 2007. So obviously very, very experienced on, on the shell. You're there, second inside, Luke Grief in front of you. How do you fancy your chances today? Well, it's got to be as good as anyone else's up the front there, so hopefully we get some brakes from your way. I mean, that's the thing with the saloons, isn't it? You know, if you're there after the, the after the five laps that have just gone, you're in for a good chance, aren't you? Well, that's it. Usually the first few laps is the way the mayhem is. If you can get through that, you'll be away. And your brother, a little bit further back, but surely that's a help when you're doing, doing stock cars, is it? Yeah, he'll be all right. He'll come through. He's got a new engine in, so he'll be all right. And what about you? Because your car's looking great, you've uh, repaneled it, obviously there's a lot of pride goes into these cars because you put the time and make your car look nice just for them to be battered. I is that really worth it? 
I like to think so, I wouldn't do it otherwise. <laughs> okay, well, you could have a major title and a gold roof by this evening. Yeah, let's hope so. Thanks a lot. So Shane Brown, 2008 world champion, um, had a terrific battle at Cowland Beath, uh, 2008 for the world uh, title with uh, none other than Luke Grief. And he's pretty close to you on this one as well, isn't he? He's on the front row, I think, isn't he? On pole. That's it, he's, he's on front pole. I mean, he's a good little driver. Obviously, you're a blooming good driver to be able to win the world last year. I know you've got a borrow car here because obviously you sold your last car. Uh, will, will that make a lot of difference for your mindset in, in the world? tonight um i'll be lying if i say i didn't want to win it because we all want to win it don't we you know that but i suppose it's a bit of like a be uh i don't know i'd like to win it but i'm not really that bothered to be honest if that makes which sense. it sounds surprising because people you know i mean in saloon stock cars you know people say well if you don't want to win it why are you doing it yeah i suppose that's very true but I, you know i've got to defend it and like i say sean and andy were very kind to lend me the car yeah so I suppose I got a much better chance than I would have in my tarmac car. Um, of course I want to win it, but like last year I really wanted to win it. This year I just I'd like to win it, but. And and obviously your preference, I think I'm right in saying, would definitely be tarmac. But on your day, you you you're good on shell as well, aren't you? I mean, everyone thinks I don't like shell. I, I do like the shell. I've just never had a car good enough to win on the shell, and. We sort of started building one halfway through the year, or the beginning of the year, for this meeting. But we lost a bit of interest and just got put to one side, do you know what I mean? I know people don't appreciate, obviously they come to watch the racing, but they don't realise the kind of hours that you put into the car. And let's just curb the rumours. What, what is happening with Shane Brown? Is he finishing after the world or is he taking a break? What's happening? Well, at this minute, we're, um, this is going to be the last meeting. Obviously, I've got to give the car back anyway. I'm not going to say, yeah, I'm definitely retiring. I'm just going to not do it for for a while and see what happens you know what i mean i just at the minute i'm just think there's more to life than going round and round in circles <laughs> shane do me a favor if you are in the lead and you have got one lap to go do win it won't you <laughs> i'll try <laughs> So another driver that's uh, been pretty consistent on picking up uh, points is uh, Jamie Clayton, third inside. I think I'm right in saying it's probably your uh, best position for the world, isn't it? Yeah, um, on my local track as well, hopefully do well, just try and ride them first few laps out. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. The first few laps, we all know in stock cars that there's going to be a lot of crashing. There are going to be people that come out of the races. And if you can ride them first sort of five or six laps, then you know you're in for a pretty good chance, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you should be. Depends, you know, back markers, things like that. If there's a stoppage, you, you never know. You could be miles down, get a stoppage, you can see me back up there. That's it. I mean, sometimes there could be up to five stoppages in a race. It's just no, nobody can tell. So you, you raced the first time. Was it here at Kings Lynn in this car? Because I know it's quite new to you, isn't it? Yep. Um, bought it off of Murray Jones about two months ago. Raced it first time here, last meeting. Got eighth in the first race, seventh in the second race, fourth in the final. So getting better all night. Yeah. Hopefully it'll go alright tonight. Good. And at Taunton you did pretty well, didn't you? I know not in this car, but in, in the other car. Where did you get there? Um, started 26th on the grid and got up to 7th. It was car was going well. I, hope, I was hoping there was going to be a stoppage, but it didn't happen. So I could have probably got to picked up another couple of places. But yeah, had a good result, really. So ma no major titles, but obviously you've managed to keep... keep. No, that's it. There, there we are. Confidence from uh, Jamie Clayton. Showing the Jamie Clayton shirt as well. We wish you all the best. Thank you, mate. Cheers. So Gordon Alexander, 71, third on the outside, uh, certainly a blister in form. I mean, uh, Gordon used to be known in the red colours for uh, many, many a year. Had a little bit of a break, obviously, because your son Dean started racing. Uh, felt you needed to be out there yourself. Changed your colours, changed your luck, won the British. What's, what about tonight then? What do you think? Oh, we'll just hit a train win this one as well. I mean, do you have a preference between tarmac and shale? When the car's going well on shale, I love the shale, but it just differs so much. Sometimes you're out there, it's wet shale, and you kind of get any drive. Other times it's dry, and it's as good as tarmac. I mean, I think that's the thing with with the Scottish, especially that they don't race as much as, as sort of the the people in this area do. So therefore, some people may say that the Scottish have got a disadvantage. But of course, if it is dry, you can drive it the same as if you were going to drive it on counter beef. Is that right? I would think it is, although it's doing to practice, but at the end of the day you've got four wheels, you've got a steering wheel, you just try and drive as best as you can. And uh, this season things really have gone very well for you, haven't they? Ah, we seem to be having a 
new lease of life, if you call it that. Aye. So just just let, let's get this uh, story in perspective. You you decided to give up, or, or was it that you were moving to one side to give uh, Sundine a chance? Well, I was wanting Dean to try and do a wee bit better, and I was going to spend a bit more time with him. But then the wife obviously wanted me to race when he was on the track and just gave him a bit of support. But to be quite truthful, I think it's about time that I just concentrated on him and tried to get him to enjoy it a bit more and as much as I have over the years. I mean, it is a great enjoyment. It's a great buzz up there and, and watching your son race. Does that give you more enjoyment th than you racing yourself? Uh, no, because I still enjoy racing myself. I mean, I have, I've loved it for years, but... I would say I do enjoy it when I when, when Dean's racing as well, eh? Okay, well let, let's look on you. Obviously, you haven't won the world. You've won a, a number of titles, but it would be nice to take the gold roof back to Scotland, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be lovely, mate. Aye. And we wish you all the best. May that happen. Thanks, Andy. So uh, another driver that's uh, been in the thick of things uh, of late, David Aldous. Uh, you're you're back. Well. Fifth inside. I mean, that's not too bad, is it, for the world? Yeah, that'd be all right. I want to give a bit of a push and see what happens. I mean, just lately you've been going very, very well on tarmac, and I know, uh, you know, with anybody, the race is one in the garage. Obviously, you've got a family. I believe you, you've recently got a house here, put a lot of time. So, so with the greatest of respect, you haven't been at your best form, have you, of late? Oh, definitely not. No, we had a we had a real poor year this year. I mean, um, shale car, we blew an engine up two or three meetings ago, put a new one in, that was spot on, and then that's just gone off. So. Hopefully we've found a problem with it this weekend and it should be back on it. We've, we've had a week on this and hopefully that'll pay off. And Taunton, not so long ago, I mean, you won it by a country mile. Really one of the races there. You you really were going very well, weren't you? Definitely, yeah. It's best I've ever gone around Taunton. Just sadly it didn't work in the European, but that's stock cars. Exactly, that's stock cars. I mean, you've got your luck. It really doesn't matter whether you're at the front or whether you're five to five back. Uh, what can you see happening on that first bend? That's, that's hard to say and there's a lot of good drivers up the front, a lot of fast drivers, they're all young, they're all hungry, um, whether they'll make it round and whether we'll uh, slip through or not we don't know but that's 25 laps isn't it, I mean it ain't all one in the first corner. No certainly not and you've won it twice already, it'd be nice to win it the third time that's for sure wouldn't it? Every time wouldn't it be, it'd be something to go down in wouldn't it but well you know just see what happens, just another race. Thank you very much, David. Good luck, thank you. Todd Jones, fourth outside, 186, a brand new car. Todd. What's going to happen then tonight? Probably break down. <laughs> so I saw you a couple of weeks ago actually at uh, the car's going well, isn't it? Yeah, not too bad. So let, let's just get this right. You, you started off mini stocks when you were 11. Obviously 16 you had to finish. Then you went into the two litre Speedworth uh, saloons. What, what made you change? Uh, well, me and my brother kept bending them too easy. So we thought it was time to do something a bit stronger. Right, and obviously we've got the world tonight. I mean, there's a lot of time that goes into these cars that people don't really realise. I mean, how many nights are you spending on, on these cars to get them ready for races like this? Uh, between four and five every week. Five nights a week? Yeah, every, every week. So that is a massive commitment really, isn't it? Yeah, it depends how busy you are at work really, whether you get time to do it or not. And, and to be fair, people say that you know races are one in the garage, and I think that is right, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. That's one thing I've learned since I've been doing saloons. And you're fortunate enough to have Dad and, and Mum uh, as massive supporters of your racing. Could, can you imagine it with, without them doing your racing? No, because I wouldn't be able to do it. Because I wouldn't be able to get it there to start with. So. But having somebody like, like Mum and Dad to support you, you know, gives you, gives you so much confidence, I'm sure. Yeah, it definitely makes a difference. Definitely wouldn't be able to do it without them. And recently you've won the uh, European. I mean, d does that kind of make you feel when you're sitting on the grid ready to go that I oh, know I can do this, I'm good enough, I've got the European, why not have the gold roof? Well, it definitely gives you a bit of a buzz, but I'm not too sure about the shell, to be honest. So your preference, what you're saying, is tarmac? Yeah, definitely. I don't really race on shell much. Why is that your preference, then? I don't know, really. I don't like getting my car dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you always turn up with a fine-looking car, and that is a fine-looking car. Best of luck, Todd. Thank you very much. So Andy Santry's 369, uh, right in the back of the grid. Um, we have interviewed the top eight people, Andy. Uh, the reason we're interviewing you, I know you're right out the back, and obviously you've just got into the uh, the grid, but the reason I'm interviewing you is, is it right, let's curb rumours, that this will be your last race meeting? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, 
I've been doing racing sort of nearly 10 years now. A lot of time and effort goes into it, and it comes a point in time where your family grow up. And uh, I've, I've got uh, a lad by the name of Ryan who's going to uh, start racing very shortly. So you're saying, uh, Ryan, how, how old is Ryan then? Well, he'll be 16 in November, so I'm hoping that we're going to get a car ready and that he'll be racing at Mildenau or Kings Lynn, I think it is, um, in December. So, obviously, it comes a time where I have to uh, move aside to um, let, my, let my lads do the racing. Right, OK. And uh, I understand you've got uh, a young lad as well, Liam. He's going to be doing the racing as well, is he? Yeah, you're exactly right. He's going to be doing uh, mini stocks. In fact, we took it out for uh, a practice, the mini stock, uh, last week to Mildenhall, and it went well. And my next race meeting, should I have carried on doing the racing, would have been the National on September the 12th at Mildenhall. And obviously, I feel it totally unfair for me to be racing when it's my, my son's first race. So I want to be behind, behind my uh, lads, really. Well, thank you very much indeed, Andy. You are uh, definitely an ambassador to the, to the sport, and we wish you uh, all the very best in uh, tonight's race. No, thank you very much.